All right, so it's been a while since I have posted a video and I'm using the front camera so the quality might be awful, but we are returning to in-person learning on Tuesday the 16th and it is Friday the 12th. And so I am going to rearrange my whole classroom and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Hopefully I will have an end product by the end of today. I have to do some planning. I'm gonna get some lunch, but I'm really excited that I'm going to have all of the kids in here and I don't have to move around the room with the tripod anymore and plug in one thing to unplug another and hold up a sign that says mute, unmute. So to have one cohesive group in one place will be really nice. So I'm gonna go flip this camera out and get us started. All right, so just here's a quick overview of the room. So I haven't had more than eight kids in the room and they were six feet originally. And this week I got clearance to make them three feet as of this upcoming week, but I tried it out with my kids on their last day, which was yesterday, Thursday. So roughly three or so feet between these seven students that were in the room yesterday. Then I had these brought in and I'm going to now put some clusters together. I have dividers here and here. So those are gonna go on every other desk. Easel's gonna move. This might not even stay a literacy board anymore. Math and literacy might swap. I'm going to try to bring a horseshoe table back in here because there's no horseshoe table. Been living on the edges of my classroom. And yesterday was just kind of a crazy day for learning. So there's a lot of things out of place. So hopefully the end video will look like this room is more put together. Okay, so I just moved the desks around. I did trios and I fortunately have 15, which was like unheard of for me. Like my last class last year had 28 kids. So the fact that I have 15, almost half is crazy. But so I'm looking around, I have these clusters of three. Now, I try to put the name tags on. So I did put the name tags on for all of the kids who were in here last week. So those are the empty desks that were being shuffled around. The desks that have things in them are the kids who were here last week. I told them they didn't have to bring everything home to bring it all back on Tuesday. But based on where everyone is, I can do at least one privacy divider per trio. And depending on who the child is, if they can handle a divider, there'll be two at the table. But they're actually, yeah, there'll have to be at least one divider there. And then I might have to go back and measure three feet with a yardstick real quick and just see if everyone is the appropriate distance. Like some of these are definitely not three feet. Like I'm looking at the one in front of me and it's they're on top of each other just from moving it. And then I spent a while in that chair trying to figure out where my horseshoe table is going to go. I want to put it in the, well, this is the front corner for me based on where I'm sitting, but it's immediately to the right side when you enter my classroom. So I wanna put the horseshoe table there. I'm thinking about taking a bookcase that I have over here and putting it behind me because I would have on it dry erase markers, phonics cards, the guided readers for the week, if I even get a chance to use those. I don't really know what centers is going to look like yet. I at least want to finish some kind of benchmark reading with them and also confirm that they know how to do some literacy skills like their letter sounds and letter names because not all of my students know those. I'm also looking to make sure that they can read the high frequency words from each of our units and wonders. So I have that all ready and printed and hole punched. It's finally having them in the room to actually get this data on them so I can just understand them better as a learner. So I'm gonna go drag the horseshoe table in, see how I need to adjust the chairs, and then I'm gonna get started with the privacy dividers. They are covered in film on all sides, so I have six sides worth of film to go take off. And then I have some clips, I have to get more from my office. Um, 
or from the main office, not my office, um, and put them on the desks. But hopefully this will come together a little bit better. I'll start putting some chairs in spots um, because I got a whole bunch of new desks because I didn't have more than eight in here, I think it was, because just because my biggest cohort was eight, but classrooms can fit up to 12 prior to this change. So a lot of these desks need to get the little square adhesive pockets put on them. Um, and I don't know, I kind of want to put carpet spots down just for the kids who are further in the back who may not see the board as well. The lighting in my room is not weird, but there's four long columns of lights and my board is facing this way and the lights go in that direction. So I can't turn on lights three and four without making the board really hard to see. Um, especially since it's a Promethean, it's not like a, a TV where I can change like sports viewing or movie theater viewing or just standard, like the one display option is my one display option. So I only turn on lights one and two, but then that makes this side of the room kind of dark. So they still can't see it with the lights on or off, but I'm gonna put some spots down three feet apart. I'll measure those out too in the front of the room and hopefully that'll help a little bit. And I really like my book display, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it just because it is kind of large. It would take up the spot of a kid sitting there. And mine is particularly deep. Um, any standard size books, like I have some books here, like this book, you would maybe just see the top edge. And this is not a particularly large or tall book. So a shorter book, like, this book here, A Little Spot of Anxiety, would com be completely hidden. You would have no idea. You would have no idea that it was even in the book display. So maybe I'll even put my name on it and put it out in the storage mobiles and next year when, or not when, if, classrooms look different, I could bring it back and utilize it somewhere else. I'm also not sold on anything being where it is other than the desks. Like, I know that this wall here is probably best for my library just because we have such a large classroom library. But math wise, like here is our math calendar that we flip daily. While on the opposite board, I have our wonders literacy wall. I'm not opposed to swapping these. Um, and I did, this, now I'm on a tangent. I did find out that I'm getting a new smart board. So I'm losing the Promethean. And I th think it's called a light box. I could definitely be getting the name wrong here. But it's going to be like a large smart TV, but it's an actually an interactive TV. So the kids can come up, they can touch it. It's going to be installed on some kind of adjustable bar, if you will. It can go about 30 inches in range. So I can move it up when the kids don't need to interact with it. And maybe kids further in the back need to see it. And then I can bring it lower when we're going to play on it. And the kids can cast to it, which makes me a little nervous with six-year-olds, but we'll figure it out. But so that though can be installed as soon as three or four weeks from now when we have spring break and it would be going on this wall here. So I might try this out and if they install the board, I'm gonna have to do a couple of switcheroos, but then I'll get my whiteboard back because if I move around with this tripod, I lose half the board because of the Promethean. So not sold on in any of the actual decor other than the desks and i'm gonna shut up and go get my horseshoe table